If you've been following my Twitter, about a week ago, I debunked some fake DMs in relation to Blair White. A JoJo Siwa stan account with 60 followers posted a video recording of Blair White saying the hard R N word in a message just to them on Twitter. They're a random person, they've got no social media presence, and this account posted Blair White saying this hard R N word message. I debunked those DM messages as fake because when transitioning from the messages to the details panel, the messages actually go blank before they transition out and I compared that with an actual transition, the messages are 100% fake. But Drama and Opinions had her own things to say about this. Uh, she said that my debunking was wrong and she has her own debunking to my debunking and I'm perpetually done and BTFO'd. Um, not really, but let's, let's watch the video and see what she has to say. But while Blair White was still off the scene, somebody put out this video claiming that they had debunked the entire screen recording thing and that the screenshots were fake and that the person who put it out actually faked the recording and that's why they have a video recording of it. Blair never said it and all of that. I'm just gonna play the video so you guys hear what they said. You know what I find really disgusting? People faking DMs in order to gain a little bit of extra internet clout. And this recent case from the esteemed account Jojo Seawinator is no exception. I don't even know why you believe that straight off the bat. I'm gonna pause right here and say it's not that difficult to believe, especially when she's been caught in the past and she's literally here on camera saying the word again while trying to defend herself that it was a slip up when she said it before. I said the word while I was fairly intoxicated. Now, I'm not a Blair White fan or a Blair White hater. I have my own issues with her, but that's really beside the point here. Fake DMs are fake DMs. I'm not a supporter of Blair White in any way. I seriously just don't understand how you can believe someone would type out a, a message like that to a random account on Twitter. And if you actually look at the original tweet when it was still up, they stated that they had been unblocked and re-screenshot of the message. So they were blocked, they couldn't screenshot, then they were unblocked and they went back and did the screen recording. Why would you leave a message like that sent and unblock the person? Sure, you would unblock it, then unsend those messages, surely? I mean, <laughs> that would that would make sense, but no, that didn't happen. That, that's, it just makes no sense whatsoever, this whole situation. That's why I said, I don't know why you would believe this. And apparently an old video recording of her saying the word with uh, with a soft A is now proof of that. I don't, I don't know why, I don't know how you draw those conclusions, but anyway. Anyway, back to the Colton story. Maya claimed to be between the ages of 14 and 17 in the photo that Colton used as proof in his Google Drive. And because of her age, he distributed CP, which will be true if she really was underage. But I'll show you proof shortly that she was an adult. Rebzion and Maya accused Colton of sharing CP. And according to Rebzion, Maya made the police report 
claiming that Colton shared CP of her. I'd like you guys to know that Maya put an age range in this comment because she had claimed earlier that she was 15 and Rev John had claimed that she was 16 in the same photo and they were being called out for the inconsistency in her age. But regardless, if she was less than 18, then it would still be CP. Colton believed Rebjorn and Maya that she was really underage and coupled with the pressure of being harassed online, he put up an apology admitting that he shared CP of Maya. But then after a while, Maya sent Colton a screenshot showing her date of birth and Colton realized that Maya was born in 97, so she couldn't possibly be underage in 2016, which is when the photo he shared was taken. Maya was in fact 19 at the time. The photo has a watermark to prove its date, so Colton essentially realized that he had been lied to as well as falsely accused of distributing CP. Based on this, he began trying to clear his name. He started contacting anyone he could who would listen to him. Now the bizarre and fucked up situation about this whole thing is that this so-called evidence that she's using is not a watermark for a photo. It's an actual file name. And as I'm going to demonstrate here, the original photo that was recorded without my girlfriend's knowledge or consent, privately one-on-one -on -one with somebody who she was involved with in her past, this, what he, right here, what you see here, that's not a date. That's a file name. And it's a really key point that I point this out. This is a file name, and I'm going to demonstrate how this doesn't actually prove anything and how it does not disprove the fact that this image was in fact underage. What you're looking at here is my most recent video I did the other day on the Logan Paul files. Now, I'm going to edit this, and I am going to change the video, this title uh, of the file, and I'm gonna change this to the exact same numbers as the original photo that was posted online being spam tweeted at me. Here we go, let me change these numbers here. So I'm changing the file name right here. This is a very common thing you can do in Windows, Linux, things like that. All right, so these are the exact same numbers as the photo via Skype that was posted. Now I'm going to open this video in VLC Media Player or any media player for that matter. And you're gonna see right here that this file name pops up, that this file name pops up on the video the exact same file name as the video that was recorded without my girlfriend's knowledge or consent. I respond, there's no false accusation. You can see this conversation here. I even tell her that it has nothing to do with camming. It's stuff prior to that date. Again, I have to reemphasize, this is Skype, one-on-one -on -one with a past partner. She replies, you haven't listened. I know you believe you're right. I don't think you intentionally accused him falsely, but in fact you did. I have a post where you clearly said he posted child P and then you reported it. Maya was adult. If you say it was prior photo, then show me proof because he showed proof of everything he claimed. Now this is the really screwed up part. She tells me that I have to show proof that underage photos of my girlfriend were posted online. She tells me that I need to edit them and blur them and then give them to her as proof that, again, underage photos were posted online. Are you daft? Do you really not understand that I am not allowed legally, nor is my girlfriend, to have images of anyone under the age of 18 and that is a federal crime? That law enforcement, when we actually came to them with this issue, even said that even if they're your girlfriend or not, you can't have these types of things in your possession because if you do, you can get in huge legal trouble for it. And yet here you're on record literally asking me to provide underage photos of my girlfriend, which I don't have, by the way, to prove with evidence, despite the fact that your original evidence is from the person who leaked revenge porn of my girlfriend via Skype one-on-one -on -one without her knowledge and consent, and then used him as evidence, a random Twitter account, to prove your point, despite the fact that it was a file name not a watermark. Holy moly. Because this is actually serious. A crime was committed and we contacted the authorities. There is no false report of anything. Because if there was a false report, then I would be in trouble or Maya would be in trouble. I know you believe Maya and I'm not trying to convince you against her because I am experienced in stuff like this. Did you not read what I just said? She cannot. If she has her own underage stuff, her sharing that is posting underage. It's CP. No. It has to show her new or inappropriate. She can censor it and show. So you want my girlfriend to censor underage images of herself under the age of 18 that has no date or time stamps on them. I don't think you know how possession of underage images work. No, I want you to prove that blank is guilty of posting CP because I have proof that he isn't. Your proof is a file name. Your proof is a file name. Your proof is a file name, which I've already demonstrated in this video. 
you can change to be whatever the fuck you want. Why not interject yourself in a real-life issue that's ongoing legally as of May 22nd, 2020, where a crime was committed, and you want to justify that crime by saying that this individual is innocent when he is not, and that the attorney's office, a real attorney's office, actually already has on file, combined with the actual law enforcement. You interject yourself in a real-life situation involving a serial obsessed stalker, and that's not a term that I use to label somebody, but that's what this person is. There's literally a Google Doc of literally they've taken every single photo of me and Maya and put in this massive collage. It's the cr some of the creepiest shit I think I've ever seen and ever experienced with over 10 years of me being on this platform. The images that were posted on Twitter via Skype are private photos. They were never supposed to be public and took that stuff without my girlfriend's knowledge or consent. And I'm going to stand by her and I'm going to defend her when a crime is committed against her, which can be proven in the court of law. Of course, the guy who leaked it isn't going to say that it was private because then he'd be admitting to posting it without her knowledge and consent, which is my whole original point. Now, this is the strangest thing here. She says, I told you I've looked at laws. You should take real legal counsel. That's the right thing to do. I then even showcased the email with the officer involved with our case, and he told us to block him and don't have any sort of interaction, with him, which is exactly what I've done. So let me ask you a question. What is up with these armchair lawyers who think they know the law better than an actual criminal attorney who specializes in cases such as revenge porn with intimate images that are being used maliciously? Because if we go really back to the original source back in November, there was literally no reason for this kid other than him being disgruntled with the fact that he was no longer in our Discord and I didn't want any more interaction with him. The kid wants revenge and he's attempting to utilize anything he possibly can. This same individual then sent me an email claiming that he was going to take his own life, titled it Suicide. What did I do? I contacted the police and had a wellness check put on him because that's the only responsible thing that I can do in that type of situation. Hey. that Felix is someone that Maya was involved with in the past like they had a one-on-one -on -one relationship and during that relationship he recorded her and then Colton made the image public now Felix said that's not the case Felix said that that photo was put up on the public archive and that Colton linked to it so Colton got it from the public Felix said that that session was not a private session that it was a Skype session that she saw as part of her calm stuff so the fact that Maya is a calm girl in the first place tells me that she's 18 and older I went on Google myself like I said and he confirmed and I googled her usernames some of her videos are still publicly available and they have the dates on them the year was clearly 2016 Maya was born in 97 in 2016 she was between the ages of 18 and 19 even up till today Maya still writes in DMs to other people that she was between 14 and 17 and she quotes the date as ending in 2016. There's no way Maya was 17 in 2016. She was between the ages of 18 and 19. biggest claim right now is that my proof is a file name. I understand that what was shown in the picture is a file name. However, by default, when you save things to your computer, it saves with the file name. The file name can be changed. But when you combine that with the fact that this was a show Maya did when she was a calm girl, for you to be a calm girl, you have to be an adult. Then it's very clear to see that Maya was most likely an adult when that happens. Now I had all of this and I gave Maya a chance. I said, show me what was posted. I made it clear that I did not want CP from Maya. I didn't want to see the actual photo, blur it out completely. I just wanted to see proof that Colton posted it and the date it was posted. Maya sent me this exact photo and said this is what he sent. She sent another photo that was from the screenshot of Colton's Twitter. The Twitter that's now deleted. So she had a screenshot of it. She censored it and she sent it to me. And if you read what's in the screenshot, Colton was clearly saying there's no way she can be 15 because he was trying to prove his innocence. She was clearly doing her calm stuff and he said there's no way she can be 15 doing stuff like this. For you to be a calm girl, you have to be an adult. Now, Rebzion claims that 
that photo was not the only photo that was shared by Colton and that Colton shared that photo as well as another photo but the same Revzion said he had never seen that photo until recently so it's either Revzion is lying when he said he saw everything that was posted the first time or he's lying now that he hadn't seen that photo until recently because if that was the photo Colton posted in November and you saw it yourself how in the world have you not seen it up until now? So at this point, I already knew I was dealing with liars. I was not going to take their word for it. And that is why I asked for proof. And I said, those photos should be completely censored and sent to me. So no, Revzion, I'm not daft. The daft thing to do will be to take your word for it after hearing all these lies that you and Maya have told. Now, this is another thing Revzion said in his video that I want you guys to think about. He reported this 16 year old to the police and he said that this guy has committed a crime. So when these images were posted on Twitter by this ex-fan of mine, the police were contacted and the police contacted his school, got his parents' information and got their address, and the police drove out to his actual residence and spoke to this minor. Everything was fine and dandy for roughly almost four to five months. Now tell me why a crime will be committed and then law enforcement officers will do absolutely nothing. This was the same question I asked Revzion. You know what he told me? He said it's because because the guy is a minor and it is handled differently. I disagreed. In Washington state where they both live, minors are not treated any differently from adults when it comes to this particular crime. And I showed you guys proof of that in my last video. It's also very interesting that now Rev John is painting it as YouTubers who feel like they know the law more than attorneys. But Rev John sent me that link to that same site that contains the law when he was trying to dissuade me from making this video. So this is what is going on here. Both Revzion and Maya tried to stop me from making this video. Revzion told me it was going to backfire on me. He was hoping that you guys were going to see the video and go why is she speaking up against someone so awesome as Revzion and then unsubscribe from my channel. When that didn't happen, he decided to come on his channel, make this video and twist the facts to try and make it backfire on me as well. But it's interesting how he thinks because I already told him that I was ready to go down standing for the truth. And I really don't care about it. Sponsor Maya telling me she's gonna drop the child porn claim and say it is revenge porn if I don't do the video. Now, why will somebody who really knew that they had child porn of them posted to the internet drop the claim and claim it was something else? What? his video and I saw Revzion retweeted it. He was egging him on on Twitter. He was liking his tweets claiming that I don't do research. Just pretty much trying to smear my name. I knew they were in it together. I knew that this was just kind of a plan but it didn't surprise me that liars and hypocrites will band together. Before I Is why Colton thought Revzion was a pedophile. Revzion's girlfriend got in contact with him when she was 12 years old. Revzion told her to come back at 17. Why 17 and not 18? He was very fast to drag the onion for dating 17 year old, but he told his girlfriend to come back at 17. That's why Colton thought he was a pedophile. Now, I don't think Revzion is a pedophile, but I think that Colton was just immature and just did not understand the situation. Revzion did not date his girlfriend at 17. He actually started dating her when she was 19, according to her. So it was that statement that Revzion made that made Colton believe that he was a pedophile. When he realized that that was not the case, he put out an apology and corrected himself. But Revzion 